Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this channel. My name is Carolyn, and this channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my returning subscribers. I really appreciate you guys showing up for each and every video. And if you're new here, then welcome. There's something about a true crime case when the victims are vulnerable that make it even more horrific. I mean, everything I talk about on this channel is horrific, but when you have either children, people with some type of disability, or as in this case, the elderly, it just seems almost a little bit more horrific. Kathy Wood started working at the Alpine Manor Nursing Home in Walker, Michigan. This was at the urging of her husband. Her husband was a little concerned about Kathy and he thought maybe if she got a job, it would get her out of the house and cheer her up. And he thought this could be something really positive for her. When her husband suggested her working there, he had no idea of the deadly outcome that would come from Kathy working there. It was 1986 and Kathy Wood was 26 years old. When she started working at Alpine Manor, she met a woman by the name of Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn Graham was 25 years old and both of them were nurses aides. The two women became friends very quickly and they became very, very close. We don't know much about either of their childhoods, but Gwen had recently moved from Texas to Michigan. It wasn't long after the two met that Kathy decided to divorce her husband. To say their relationship was a whirlwind was putting it mildly. These two had barely met, become lovers, before they began killing together. Unfortunately for everyone else, but fortunately for the killers, their first murder was ruled natural causes, and this was just the beginning of a rampage that they would go on. Kathy was described as a very bitter, mean, abrupt woman. She was very difficult to work with, and she was always just kind of very nasty and rude to her co-workers. Obviously, other than Gwen, she was not the most pleasant person to work with. Basically, Kathy just created a lot of drama in the workplace. And then Gwen came along and kind of took Kathy's attention away from the way she was treating other employees and all of her attention was now on Gwen. While Kathy was new to dating women, Gwen was not. Gwen had known she was a lesbian her whole life, so she had always dated women. But this was the first relationship where Kathy was dating a woman. Gwen was described as somebody who was very eager to please, and she fell head over heels in love with Kathy immediately. Kathy and Gwen, now living together, made a pact that they would be together forever and five days. Not really sure what the significance of the five days is, but... To many people on the outside, seeing the two together, they could have appeared to be very innocent. They were very much in love. They were very lovey-dovey. So outside and looking at them, you'd just think they were just an adorable couple that was madly in love with each other. The problem is their love included deadly games. Their sex was described as aggressive. Now, this was during the 80s, so I don't know exactly what they meant in the 80s by aggressive sex. I know that the two of them did enjoy choking each other while they were having sex, and this was all consensual. But whatever aggressive sex meant in the 80s, these two were having it. They both occasionally used drugs, and they seemed to really in a very extreme way, want to prove their love to each other. To them, just being in love was ordinary and they wanted to take it to an extreme. And this is when a very twisted game 
that the two of them came up with began. Kathy was the one who called the shots and Gwen was very much an eager participant. They were often described that Kathy was the mastermind and Gwen was the muscle. Their killing spree began with a 60 year old victim, Marguerite Chambers. And the reason that Marguerite was chosen was because the first letter of her name was M. So this is sometimes referred to as the spelling bee murder or the spelling murder. But basically what their game was, was they wanted to spell out murder using the initials of each of their victims. So Marguerite is M, so she's the first letter, and their goal is to finish spelling out the entire word. Like if they were so into spelling, couldn't they have played like Scrabble or something? Not, you know, spelling murder. I don't know, stick with Scrabble. That was around in the 80s, could have been fun, but no. Not for these two. These two were going to prove their love. And obviously to prove your love, you've got to take someone's life because that makes absolutely zero sense. But that was the way the two of these women thought. Marguerite was in the nursing home because she suffered from dementia. And her husband, Ed, would come and visit her every Sunday evening to spend time with her and try to cheer her up and he just loved being with his wife. It was really hard for the two of them to be separated now that she needed constant care and to be in a living facility. And I don't know if I've mentioned yet, but the nursing home is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So on this particular Sunday when Ed was going in to see his wife, it was a horrible snowstorm and there was freezing rain and a lot of other visitors didn't bother to go and visit their loved ones because the roads were bad. But to Ed, he was there each and every week, no matter what, to be there for his wife, Marguerite. Ed parked in the parking lot that was mostly empty because there weren't many visitors. And as he was about to walk into Marguerite's room, he said her name out loud because he didn't want to walk in and frighten her. Ed never knew if Marguerite knew what he was talking about when he was talking to her. She would not say anything. And the two of them would sit and hold hands the whole time Ed was there. And it was described that Marguerite hands would be shaking because of part of her illness. And Ed would just sit there holding her shaking hands and talk to her for hours, not even knowing if she was aware of who he was or why he was there. He just loved his wife so much and he would do anything for her. It had been 12 years since Marguerite had first been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. At first, Ed was able to manage and have Marguerite live at home, but as her disease progressed more and more, eventually five years before the time we're talking about, she did have to go into a nursing home because she needed full-time care that Ed could not provide. By 8 p.m., Ed was getting ready to leave and he kissed his wife goodbye and expected that he would just see her next week for his next visit. Unfortunately, Ed would never see Marguerite alive again. As Ed was leaving the nursing home, all the nurses were in the hallways. They were doing their rounds. They were getting everybody ready for bed. They were giving out medications and basically just getting it so everyone could be settled in bed because they would all be going to bed shortly. It was after Ed left that Marguerite's nightmare began. Marguerite suddenly found herself struggling for air. There was something being held over her face. It was fuzzy and it was pushing too hard on her nose and her jaw and she was struggling to live. There was a terry cloth being held over her mouth and her nose and within a few moments she lost consciousness but she didn't die this night. She survived the smothering, but there were a few things that she wouldn't forget. 
the face of the woman who was holding the cloth against her face. Marguerite was a very sick woman and she was not able to articulate what had just happened to her. And I just can't imagine she's in such a vulnerable state that a nursing aide has just tried to murder her and she is lying in that bed helpless and she's not able to explain to anyone what had just happened. But this person was not finished with Marguerite yet. A few days later, Marguerite felt someone take the pillow from behind her head and place it over her face. They were also holding terry cloth over her nose and her mouth. So they had a piece of terry cloth like this over her mouth and then the pillow on top of that on her face. And she thrashed and tried as hard as she could, but she was she didn't ha stand a chance. She was an elderly woman who was sick and did not have the strength to fight off this person. Gwen and Kathy had just taken their first victim. Both Kathy and Gwen were scheduled to be off the day after the murder of Marguerite. But the day after that, they were both scheduled to work. Kathy called into work with an excuse for the both of them why they would not be attending work that day. They said that their heater was broken and they were waiting for a repairman to come to their house to fix it. The truth was they were at home drinking, having sex and just living in the excitement that they got out of killing this poor, innocent old lady. Kathy would later confess that their aggressive sex would even become more aggressive after they had committed the murder. So apparently what was going on was committing these murders was turning these women on. So they would go murder an innocent elderly person and then go home and have amazing sex because they were so turned on by the sick pieces of shit that they were. Luckily, their sick love affair didn't last. At some point in 1988, Kathy had confessed the murders to her ex-husband, Ken. And she had confessed the murders to Ken not long after Gwen had began dating another woman. So I think Kathy got a little jealous that Gwen was moving on and she decided to confess to her husband and take them both down. But she was gonna try to make herself look not quite as guilty as Gwen. Ken, her ex-husband, who's just a normal human being, has just had his ex-wife confess that his ex-wife and her lover have killed several people. And it's kind of debated how many people they actually did kill, but he went to the police, obviously, to report that Kathy has confessed to him that Kathy and Gwen had been killing people. So if you'd hear Kathy tell it, Gwen did all the killings. She was just the lookout. And it's always convenient when someone is the lookout. So Kathy tells the police that the first person she saw Gwen smother was Marguerite. And she said that she confronted Gwen afterwards about why she had killed her. And Gwen supposedly had said that it was an emotional release. And I'm not buying any of this BS from Kathy, that she was just this innocent victim who watched and never did a single thing herself. I just, I hate it when there's a pair of serial killers and one of them tries to claim like, oh, well, I was just watching or I was just in the background. I didn't do anything. It's like, no, you both are responsible for murder if you are going on a killing spree with your lover. And generally, if you don't want to be part of a murder, a murder is not going to turn you on sexually, Kathy. But 
at the time when Kathy started confessing this information to the police, the police were already investigating eight suspicious deaths at the nursing home. And those eight deaths had all taken place in the first five months of 1987. Marguerite had simply been the first killing as far as we know, but Kathy would go on to confess to five other murders. And Gwen at one point tried to claim that one of the murders was a mercy killing because the woman had gangrene. And it's like, bitch, no one wants your kind of mercy. Like you weren't killing people to put them out of their misery. You were killing people because it turned you on. Let's be honest. And there's something when the victims are so vulnerable that just, it, it makes cases so much harder for me anyways, when it's children or the elderly or anybody who is in a very vulnerable state, like, I mean, all of them are, are horrible, but it's just these elderly people were in a nursing home because they literally could not take care of themselves. And they are just victims laying in wait for these two psychopaths. And one of them's not even in prison anymore. One of them's just walking around. We'll get there. We'll get to that. But yeah. Kathy also told police that for every murder, Gwen would take a souvenir. She also told the police that Kathy and Gwen would brag to their co-workers that they were smothering the patients and show them the souvenirs. Now, if you work in a nursing home and someone is joking about smothering a patient, you need to call the police immediately. Nobody jokes about smothering elderly patients, especially if you're working as a nurse's aide in a nursing home. Why no one called the police before this? I have no idea because they knew people were dying. And I mean, obviously in a nursing home, lots of people are going to die. That's they're near the end of their life and they're in the nursing home because they are sick and dying. But if somebody's joking about smothering them, call the police, just call the police. Like, I don't understand, but I guess they joked about smothering patients and people just didn't believe them or didn't give a shit. I don't know. The two lived together from September 1986 to July 1987. And this was the period of time that they killed. They claim six victims. Police believe it could be eight, possibly 11 but six are confirmed that they were murders. Gwen then quit the nursing home and she moved back to Texas not long after Kathy quit as well. And police believe that the reason that both women quit was because they were being investigated. So police had been looking into suspicious death, but no one was really investigating it until Ken went to the police and told them what Kathy had confessed. Ken told police that when Kathy confessed to him, he asked her why the two of them had done this. And Kathy's response was for the fun of it. They had been murdering elderly women for the fun of it. These women killed ranged in age from 60 to 98 years old, and Marguerite, who was 60, was the youngest. The public was obviously horrified when they found out the reason behind the murders was for the fun of it, and the women claimed that it strengthened their love bond by killing together. If you need to kill someone to strengthen your love, sweetie, that ain't love. Nope. All of the victims had been killed the same way. They had all been smothered with a washcloth. 
And as I had mentioned earlier, the couple's initial plan was to spell out the word murder using the initials of each victim. But apparently they gave that plan up because it doesn't make any sense. It's stupid, but they gave it up because some of their killings that they tried to, to commit didn't work. Ken told police the reason he had gone to them to tell them about the murders was because he said Kathy obviously needed professional help. Um, we also needed Kathy to stop murdering people, Ken. Don't forget that part. Because, yeah, we want to get Kathy help, but we also want her to stop killing people. Right? Police were quickly able to rule out financial gain or sympathy as reasons behind the killings because there was no financial gain and I don't believe either of these women have a sympathetic bone in their bodies. When police asked Kathy, because Kathy's trying to play it innocent, right? Kathy's trying to stand back and say, I just saw her kill them. I didn't participate. She was just the lookout. She stood in the hallway, made sure Gwen didn't get caught, but Gwen had done everything. So when police asked Kathy, why didn't you report this to us? She said she was afraid of Gwen. And she wasn't afraid of Gwen. The only reason she even told her ex-husband about the killings was because, because Gwen had moved on with another woman and Kathy was jealous. That was why Kathy confessed these killings to her husband, Ken. She did not confess these killings because she felt bad or she wanted them to stop or, I don't know, had a soul, none of it, no. She confessed this because she was jealous. Authorities believed there could have been up to 11 or 12 victims, but they weren't able to prove um, all of the cases that they suspected. And Kathy claims that Gwen came up with this idea to commit murder together because she thought Kathy was becoming interested in another woman. So if they committed murder together, they would have this bond. And I just, everything that Kathy says is just, I don't believe any of it. I just, I really don't believe any of it. I think that both of them did this together because they both enjoyed it because they're both psychopaths. I don't think one was pushing the other into it. I don't think Gwen committed all the murders and innocent little Kathy sat in the hallway peeking around. Like, I just don't buy any of it. In 1989, Kathy testified against Gwen and Gwen was found guilty of five murders and she was sentenced to five life sentences. So good, that's what she deserves. Now we're gonna talk about Kathy. Kathy pled guilty to a much lesser charge of second degree murder for Marguerite Chambers, who was the first one they murdered. Kathy also pled guilty to conspiracy to commit second degree murder. But she was only charged for one count, one for second degree murder and one for conspiracy to commit second degree murder. What about all the other people she killed? I think in this situation, I think police really needed Kathy to testify against Gwen. I think that was the reason why, like, I don't think police believed Kathy's nonsense. I think that the only way that they could get Gwen for all of the murders and for Kathy's little duda, they, they needed Kathy to testify. So Kathy was sentenced to 20 to 40 years with the possibility of parole. Between 2005 and 2018, Kathy applied for parole and was denied seven times. But in 2018, Kathy was set free. So Kathy, at 56 years old, was a free woman. In 2020, she moved in with family members in South Carolina. So if you're in South Carolina, 
Keep your eyes open because this woman is just walking free. And if you know any elderly people, keep them close because this bitch is walking free. As for Gwen, she has no possibility of ever getting parole as she should. Um, and a lot of people actually believe that the re roles were reversed. Most people actually believe that Kathy was the aggressor and that Gwen was the one that kind of followed along. They believe that Kathy was the murderer and Gwen was the lookout and Kathy had masterminded the whole situation. She also masterminded the confession so that she would be able to get herself a better deal. So I don't know. Gwen's going to rot in jail for the rest of her life, as she should. But Kathy, I don't know, kicking it in South Carolina. So it'll be interesting if one day Kathy ends up in a nursing home and the kind of care that she receives. But as we know, most people that work in nursing homes are very loving people who get into that profession because they actually want to take care of elderly people. But... Yeah, that's the end of today's story. Um, I, today was a really, really hard one for me. Again, when people are really vulnerable, it just, it's it's so heartbreaking, especially with Marguerite, because they had tried to kill her and did not succeed. And she couldn't even speak well enough to tell another nurse that her life was in danger. And I just... I think of her like laying in that bed knowing because she saw now whether it was Gwen or whether, or whether it was Kathy is up for debate. It's like through the court system, it's believed that it was Gwen. I'm so sus on Kathy that I don't know. Um, but she knew that it was a nurse like she had no problem with her vision. She could see the person smothering her. And then she just had to lay in that bed until they decided to finish what they started. It's just, yeah, today was really, uh, I don't like when people pick on the elderly. I just, it really bothers me. So that's the end of today's video. And if you'd like to support the channel, please stick around and watch another video and comment down below if you have any suggestions for any cases that you would like me to cover. And I have been getting some suggestions. Every suggestion I get, I do look into. Whether I do the case often depends on if I can find enough information to make a whole video. Because sometimes I've had really good suggestions, but I haven't been able to find enough information on those. So if you give a suggestion, I guarantee I'm going to look into it. And if I can find enough information, I'll do the story. But um, yeah, sometimes you're suggesting, unfortunately, if I don't have enough information, obviously, I can't do a video. But I have a few of them that um, I'm going to keep working on, keep digging, trying to find more information so I can bring those to you guys. But I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day and I will see you in the next one.